Okay, so I got a lot of interest in my stove that I've built here for the shop. I'm trying to back up and get a little better view. I've got a kind of a mess around here, but so I took a 55 gallon drum and bought the kit from Northern Tool to do the wood burning stove originally. And I basically got some ideas off YouTube and kind of changed it up. But what you can see is I've got my black iron that goes into this green tote, which stores my air mattress inflation pump. And then you can see I've got this tubing. It's actually copper tubing. It's just plated and it goes into a brass fitting. There's also a T under the top of the, the barrel that the copper pipe goes down through. So the air goes through and around the copper tubing that goes down through the middle of it. And I'll show you in just a minute. And then I've got some rubber hose that just goes up to a five gallon bucket that I've bought a bulkhead and just a faucet uh, valve from Home Depot. And then you'll see the screw that I put in here. And what I did that for is to pull it out. Whenever I'm done, I can turn off my valve and pull the screw out. And it allows the air to travel through the hose and keep from having like a vacuum built on the hose where it will just constantly drip until it's empty. This will allow it to actually drain completely empty before I leave the shop and I don't have any worry of a fire hazard or fire restarting. So today I'll show you. It's not real cold here today. It's... It's just a little over 40 degrees, almost 45 really. And that's kind of why I chose to come out here today to do this. Because I'm actually going to modify a couple of things to make this a little bit safer. Right now, you can see right here, I've got a little bit of an oil leak. And I don't like that because it gets real hot and I don't want it to catch on fire. And then here on my hose, I just put a little clamp. And it also has a drip. And you can see on the floor, it just barely misses my barrel. And I don't need that to start a fire either. But I'm, from the wall to the center of my barrel, I'm three feet. And I just kind of went up through the ceiling and through my um, roof so far. I'm going to get a rubber high heat gasket um, and put around it. I haven't ordered that yet. This is all kind of still in the works. But I do have a chimney out the top and it's, you know, as it should be. You know, it's got a, a rain cover and everything. But I will be putting a double wall or a triple wall insulated stovepipe through the ceiling eventually uh, right now it doesn't get hot enough up there to really mess anything up and i'm not too concerned and also i did add a fire extinguisher just for safety reasons um what i'm going to do is i'll show you some stuff i bought and i'm going to kind of modify this today so i went and got a few things from home depot i'm actually going to put these flanges one on top of the barrel, one on the inside of the barrel, and screw my pipe into it. Because right now, the copper and the brass fittings are suspending the iron, uh, black iron pipe, inside, which is kind of heavy. And I'm afraid if I'm burning at any point, and then this copper gives way, because it's not a very good fit. You know, it's pretty loose. If it gives way, I'll have oil going everywhere and potentially have another fire hazard and have something I'm going to have to get under control. So we're gonna to try to eliminate that. And then the other thing I got is, um, once I take all this apart, I'll lay it out and show you how I put it together. But I'll do that in just a second. I'll kind of, I'll jump the video forward. But I got a couple more, bra or another brass fitting. And this is a brass key with a little valve on it. And what that's gonna be is that's gonna take the place of my screw. So I actually have something kind of legit where I can open the air and not just a, a screw that's pretty I don't know, redneck engineered for lack of a better term. And I'm going to add that in there. So it's a little more safe, a little more, you know, nice and clean. And um, then I'll go from there. But I will start taking things apart. Once I get them apart, I'll sit them out here and show you guys what exactly I've done and how I've done it. That way you kind of understand how it works. And I will be back shortly. What we've got is the stainless pot. You can see three links of copper pipe that are plated which it doesn't matter if it's plated or not these were just really cheap so i bought three i think they're 24 inch or let's see 18 inch links and then i've got a couple of brass fittings i've got these two flanges that i'm going to mount on the on the barrel so that it's a little bit safer i've got one just small nipple and what that's going to do is go from this 12 inch black pipe and the t it's going to the top 
and I've got a brass three quarter inch pipe to a three eighths inch um, tube fitting that this will go in, it will go on the flange, and then this will go in the other side to the second flange over here on the top of the tank. Okay, we're back here and now you can see I've got my new flange installed with the new copper coated um, lines for my oil. I've got a brass fitting to splice a couple of pieces together. There's my T to let my air in to drain my oil when I'm done burning. And now you can see it's a little bit shorter rubber hose goes up to my bucket. And then I've got my air and I'll show you inside. My light turned on here. So what you can see is there's my pot and up there there's my T. And at the top of the T you can see the line coming in right here. My black line and it goes over into my bilge pump hose that I bought, it's very cheap. And then into my tote. So here's how my tote is set up. I've just got pillow case or pillow stuffing down in here. I've got the pump buried down in here, left it on. I drill the hole on this side for the bilge um, hose, and then at the back, right down there, to let the power cable in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this, oh, and to not to forget, there's, this tote has air holes, like a ventilation built into it, so I didn't drill any more holes and it pulls plenty of air through there. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I start it. I basically, I will open my faucet, get a little bit of flow. It's pretty cool, so it's going to be thick. I'm going to get it running real good. It'll take just a second to get it all. Get it all down to the to the bottom. There it is. It's hitting my connection, and then okay. So now you can see it's coming out of my pipe, and basically my copper tube is going all the way through this black pipe, right to the bottom edge to meet even with the black pipe. And so what I'll do is I'll let it drain in there just for a minute, I mean just for a few seconds really. And then I'll take my torch and get the oil started. Sometimes you could throw diesel in there to help it light off a little faster. I usually don't just because it's, I mean it takes a minute but it doesn't take that long. So I'm going to get it going and then I'll show you what comes next. Okay, so I've got my oil started and now I'm going to go turn on the air and get it really going what i've done is i basically put enough oil in there just to get it burning and there's actually quite a bit and you can kind of see it's still dripping and i turned off my faucet up there to stop the oil flow just because i've got plenty in there and basically when i decide to turn the air on it's when you can hear the oil boiling you can it makes that little pinging sound and it starts to really flame up good and once that happens you can get your your air flow going and really get this thing a blazing so i'm gonna go get it lit up and get the air blower plugged in and then i'll be right back okay so it's airs on just turned it on and closed my door and you can hear it really blazing inside there i mean it's going strong and what i usually do is i let it kind of burn down some of the oil in the pan before i open my faucet valve back up because there's usually so much oil in there it'll start spraying out and going everywhere and you'll have flames shooting out of any hole on your on your device on your stove if you don't if you don't uh, burn some of it off so basically you can see I've got it down to just barely going and what will happen is when it starts dripping again she'll flame back up but the goal is to get the pan hot and keep it hot enough to where it'll actually do something and, and keep the oil burning and so I'm gonna make sure it gets to run in here and then I'll come back again. Okay, just started dripping again. Now you see it kind of building back up. Here in a second it'll be so so heavy you won't even be able to 
I'll tell what's going on in there. kind of hear it coming back to life. Alright. Something else I've done up here on my faucet, I've made a mark so I know exactly where to stop. I've actually got it past my mark now. I'm going to turn it back to where I need it. I'm going to go full close and then back. So, one around. And now I'm open to my mark. I know it's good heat and now it's going I don't turn my fan on yet because I just want it to get nice and warm but you can see my blowers humming away you can hear it and I don't have a lot of oil in my bucket I'm gonna fill that up in just a minute but um I just kind of wanted to let y'all see that it's going and running and I'm gonna open this door so you can see how much flame is actually coming off this thing I mean it is raging Just oil. No wood, nothing else. Just used motor oil. And what I'll do in a minute is I've got a I've got a thermal heat gun. And I'll get my thermal heat gun and shoot the outside of this stove and let you see just how hot it's getting. Okay, so it's been going for maybe 10 minutes now, maybe. And I'm gonna shoot it with my thermal heat gun and let you just see how hot this thing's really getting. So, here we can read the thing. It's 853, and up here at the top, 926, 962, 934, so we're, you know, we're, we're almost a thousand degrees on this barrel. I mean, it's putting off some major heat. And I can already tell, you know, my shop, pardon the mess, is pretty good size. It's 40 by 50, I've got a 20 by 20 room, and my front door is right over here. When you walk in the door, you can already feel, you know, the heat radiating in. And I mean, this thing's getting, getting hot. But uh, I basically just wanted to show you guys how it worked and how I was doing it just so you could kind of maybe do your own or you know get some ideas to build your own. But I've got my flue fully open. I've got my little air vent down here at the bottom. It's open. And then I've got a hole in my barrel, you know, just that comes on the barrel. And um, it's that's the only air going in beside the forced air. And I mean, it is really getting after it now. And where I'm sitting, let's see. I'm probably approximately six feet from it and you can see I mean we're we're hot and it's putting off some great heat so hopefully you guys like this if you have any questions feel free to ask I'll be more than happy to give you any ideas or things that I've done or I wouldn't do or I'd change Right now, I like how I've got it. It's actually a lot better than what it was in the pictures I posted. Um, I'm actually about out of oil up there. I've got to go. I've got another bucket down in my garage that I've got to get and, and put in there. But um, it's it's amazing how well this thing works. And it's it's unreal how hot it's actually getting. It's just, it's, it's crazy. But I uh, hope you guys like this. And again, ask me any questions if you got them. Something I did forget to show you guys. And it hadn't been five minutes since I killed it. And it's actually already almost completely burnt out. Just a little flicker left in there, which is about to be done. But, you know, we, we made it up to, it was over 75 degrees. I think it was pretty dang close to 80 in just a few minutes. I mean, this thing, it's something else. So, again, ask questions. Be happy to help. Hopefully you guys uh, can get some good ideas and good luck and something else i would tell you don't leave this thing running and not be by it i mean th these aren't exactly the safest in the world but they're not what i would call dangerous either um, as long as you build them right so good luck to everybody and have a great day